Let's get to know Blender and configure it. First, let's see where we can download Blender. From its official website, blender.org. Go to the Download tab. The default option here is the Windows installer. Choose the correct one for your operating system. The first thing we should be doing now is to see some preferences. Let's go to Edit and open the Preferences menu. Now the first thing we should be setting it up is the interface size. Depending on your monitor screen or device, you want to set it scale accordingly so you can see everything inside Blender. For tutorials, bigger text usually helps, so you'll be setting a little big to 1.5. We also want to change the appearance of Blender. We can do so by going here on Teams. Now this is the default Blender theme. If you want to change to another one, Blender comes with a lot of themes by default. You can test them and see which one you like. And here is my own custom theme, Nanotech Game Dev. If you want it, I'll be putting it in the description below. Now for you to install that theme, or any other theme for Blender, all you need to do is load here the XML file. We also want to change the default fonts. Still in the interface setup, you can go down here on the texture render. And here what we want to change is the interface font. And here you can pretty much load any font you want. I will be using the one called the gym. I think that font looks pretty good. Now we have Blender with our custom font. Yay! Now we are done with customizing the interface. Let's go now to the input setup. If your device doesn't have a numpad, you can emulate it right here. The numpad is mostly used for navigation inside Blender. Also, if you're using a mouse that doesn't have the middle mouse button, you can emulate it right here as well. And you can emulate the middle mouse button with Alt left click. Again, these are quite useful for navigation inside Blender. Now we need to go to the System tab and enable the GPU for Cycles rendering which is in the system tab right here. And here make sure your GPU is enabled on the CUDA. Now we are finished with the user preferences for now. Make sure your settings are saved by going on this button right here. Normally they are auto save, but just make sure. And you can also restore your preferences if you mess something up. We also will be going back to this preferences menu whenever we need. Now let's just get a little introduction on the interface aspects of Blender which are the workspaces, areas and the editor layouts. When I first open Blender, it usually starts on this default workspace called Layouts. Workspaces define the layout of your editors by these defined areas, which you can modify. Just by toggling workspaces, you change the entire layout for Blender. This is the main advantage of using workspaces. Let's see how we can edit and create our own custom workspace. Right click on it and duplicate it. Now we have a new workspace just like the previous one. You can change its order on the tabs. Let's put it on front. Let's rename our custom workspace by double clicking on it. Now anything you change the layout will be kept in this workspace. Note that workspaces are local to files. This means that any changes you make in the workspace will be saved only on this file. So this should be a great moment to save our file. Click on the file menu and save it. Remember to save often. The editors are these main windows you see here. You can edit any of those areas and be saved under the current active workspace. To edit the areas of these editors, just right click on the borders. You can define splits or join them to your liking. When you duplicate the areas, you basically duplicate the editors. And on this case, it's the same as the previous one, 3D viewport. You can change the editor by going on this button. These are all editors available for Blender. As you work with Blender, you can keep the layout and just change the editor. But it's faster if you have a specific workspace for that specific functionality. This way you don't have to mess with defining areas or change the editors every time. You just toggle to a new workspace. And you can see Blender already comes with some default workspaces. So all editors have two submenus, which are contextualized for their specific tasks. And you can toggle them by using the key T or N. This is very important to remember because you use them very often. Now let's see some important editors. The first one we'll be looking in great depth is probably the most used one, the 3D viewports. This is where everything happens in 3D. In the 3D viewport, if you press T, there are a couple of tools. And N opens more submenus with a lot of tabs. Using the SELECT tool, 
let's click on the cube. The informations on this panel are now updated to the cube. If you select the camera right here, you'll see the location changes. If you select back the cube and change this position, you'll see the cube starts to move. These are the main properties of a 3D object, which are the location, the rotation and scale. This is a numeric input field. You can change the values by clicking and dragging. Press Shift if you want to be more precise, or press Ctrl and you snap it to units. You can also type a number in this field, and you can also do math. This works in any Blender numeric field. And here the units are set to the metric system. You can change the units by going on this button right here, which are the settings for the scene file. Note that by changing the unit scale here, will change some things you might not expect, such as the physical simulations on Blender will be affected. Let's just leave it at the default on unit of 1 and using the metric system. Now let's see how we can navigate around the 3D viewport. For that, I want a better object to help us with our orientation. So let's delete the cube. Select the cube and press X. A confirmation prompt will appear. Just left click to confirm it. And by deleting the cube, you get your first milestone unlocked. You're not a noob anymore. You now start to get respect from Blender. Mm. Now let's add a new object. On the 3D viewport, press Shift A. This is the object add menu, which you can also open up here. Now this list might look a little bit different than yours. That is because I have a bunch of add-ons enabled, which we will see later. For now, let's just add a new object. Let's go to the mesh menu and add a monkey. This is Suzanne, a 3D chimpanzee head from Blender 2.25 introduced in 2002 February. A standard object we can use for testing. Now on this little tab down here, you can adjust your last operation. This tab is temporarily to your last operation. In this case, we can add the size of the monkey head. Let's see how we can focus on our selection or the scene. Select Suzanne, go to the view menu and frame selected. You can see that the shortcut for that is the numpad dot. You can change this hotkey by right clicking on that and selecting change shortcut. Now, by default, Susan comes shaded flat. Let's right click on it and change it to auto smooth, just so it looks a bit better. Now we'll see normals and shading on future videos. For now, just notice the difference from auto smooth to shaded flat. So now we are focusing on Suzanne. Let's see how we can focus on the scene by going on View, Frame All. The hotkey for that is the Home key. Now we are focusing on all objects. You can see Suzanne, the light, and the camera. Now let's see how we can orbit around the scene. If you press and hold the middle mouse button, you will be orbiting around the last focused selection. You can see if we select the camera, focus on it, and hold the middle mouse button, we will be orbiting around the camera now. You can also orbit around using the gizmo. You can enable it right here. Now if you click and drag this gizmo right here, you should orbit it around just like previously. You can zoom in and out of the focused point just by using the scrolling view of your mouse or just by pressing down and moving the mouse with this icon here. You can pan the view by holding the shift and middle mouse button, or by pressing down and holding the mouse on this icon right here. Now these are the most important ways which you can navigate around the scene. Now let's see how we can switch the camera on the fixed angles using the numpad navigation. You can enter the current active camera by pressing 0 on the numpad. Or by clicking on this camera icon right here. By pressing the numpad numbers, we can switch the view to some fixed angles. The shortcuts are 1 for front, 7 for top, and 3 for right. And all of those navigation tools you can access by holding the tilt key. By pressing 9, you can invert any of those views. So if you press 1 for front and 9 for the inverse, you'll be looking at the back view. And here on the top you can see the name of the active view. 
And you can change the time it takes when you are changing these view modes by going under the preference menu again, navigation, orbit and pan, smooth view. If you leave this numeric field at zero, it will disable the transition altogether and the transitions will be instant. Let's test it. As you can see, now it's extremely fast and easy to use. Now let's see how we can show only a selection. We can enable the local view mode by using the slash on the numpad, which you can also find under view menu, local view, toggle local view. And let's see the last useful technique for navigation, which is the camera walk fly mode, which you can access by going to the view menu, navigation, walk or fly navigation. As this is a great way to navigate the scene, let's add a custom shortcut using the key map in the user preferences. Open the preference menu and go to key map. Here all the hotkeys on Blender are listed. Here you can change the hotkeys or restore them to the default ones. Let's search for the action walk slash fly. Here you can see the action that is under the 3D view, which is the one we want. Now you can click on this button and give any shortcut you want, I'll be using F. Now I have the hotkey for that mode, let's select which one we want. I like to use the walk navigation because it's more precise, you can also use the fly. Let's disable gravity as well. And here's how my settings are configured to the walk mode. Now that we have configured the navigation fly and walk mode, let's test it on our scene. Now if we press F on the 3D viewport, we'll enter the walk fly mode. Notice down there all the commands you can give to manipulate the camera inside this mode. Press W to go forward, A to go left, and D to go right, and so forth. After we have moved in that mode, to confirm the position of the view, just click on the left mouse button. You can exit the navigation mode by pressing ESC or the right mouse button. If you cancel the view, you will go back to its previous saved position. This mode also works to position cameras in the 3D view. With this, you should be able to navigate anywhere you want on the 3D scene. Now, it's important to memorize all of these tools, because most of the time working on the 3D viewport, you will be changing the view constantly, so it's important to memorize and remember all of these techniques. Practice and memorize each one of them, it will be useful for you in the future. This concludes our chapter in navigation on the 3D viewport. Now let's talk about the property editor. Here you can see how the scene is rendered to editing materials, changing objects, modifiers or adding particles. You can change the position of any property by holding down this icon. You can also use the mouse to scroll on the list or by holding the middle mouse button. Depending on what you're working, the order of the properties can speed up your workflow. You can expand or close properties by clicking on the arrow icon. You can open or close multiple properties at once by holding down the mouse button and scrolling through the properties. You can also filter any properties you want by clicking up here. There are a couple of menus in here hidden under these icons. You can hide the selection menu by clicking and dragging, and click it back on this arrow icon to show it back. By clicking on these icons you can change various data inside the blend file and also for the current selection. The object properties are updated to your last selection. If we select Suzanne, you can see we have a couple of properties down here. But if you select the camera now, you'll see that a lot of these properties disappear. That is because this is a camera object. You can see that the camera options are hidden under here on this camera icon. Aside from that, it's quite important to know the properties which are configured in the scene, which are the render settings and the output settings. These properties will tell how you want Blender to render your scenes. Now there are a lot of properties hidden and nested under these menus, but you cannot learn all of them at once, we need to explore them contextually when we need, so that you'll be able to understand each one. This concludes the introduction to the property editor. Now let's see the last editor, the outliner. The outliner keeps a list of all the objects and data you have inside the blend file. It's an organizer for your blend project. Let's change the display mode to the view layers. We can see some objects listed under the view layers of this current scene. Collections inside Blender are just like folders. You can group elements together and arrange your scenes in the way you see fit. Collections also are used in compositing and with the asset system. We can see here all the objects we have in our scene. 
You can see you have Suzanne, our lights, and our camera. You can rename any object inside the Outliner by double-clicking on it. You can also rename them using the F2 button inside the Outliner or in the 3D viewport. Now let's see how we can toggle the visibility of our objects using the Outliner with the 3D viewport. If you select Suzanne and press H on your keyboard, which is the default key to hide an object, we can see in the Outliner the eye icon closed. If you hover over its tooltip, it says it's temporarily and only for the viewport. You can click on the eye icon to toggle its visibility. As H only hides objects, you can display them back using Alt-H. And you can also hide all objects but your selection using Shift-H. And you can display them back using Alt-H. To select all objects in the scene at the same time, press A. And to deselect them, press A again. This concludes our introduction to the Outliner. We learned to use the User Preferences menu. We also learned how to install a custom theme. We also explored some Blender interface basics. We explored in great depth how to navigate around the 3D viewport. We saw a little introduction to the Property Editor. And we also saw a little introduction to the Outline Editor. Besides that, we explored some general action and shortcuts all around. Thank you for watching this video throughout. If you like this content and you would like to see a little more, subscribe, like, share the video and comment on it. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye bye.